Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to our Phonics and Essential Letters and Sounds Zoom. It's not actually a live Zoom because I've just done that with some lovely parents who could make it, but it did not record. So I am now doing it again. <laughs> so grab yourself a glass of wine or a cup of tea. Um, I wish I had my wine right now. And we're going to go through Essential Letters and Sounds, Phonics in the School, Reading in the School and a little bit of spelling. So I will share my screen with you. Should be from the beginning. Ooh. Let's try again. There we go, from the beginning. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to have a look at today is how reading is taught at Tarpley. We're going to hopefully develop your confidence in helping your children with phonics and reading. I'm sure not many of you did phonics at school, so it's all new. We're going to teach the basics of phonics and learn some useful um, terms that you might hear us or your children use. I'm going to outline essential letters and sounds and um, share ideas which parents um, can support learning at home. And then there won't be an opportunity to ask questions, unfortunately, but you obviously know that you can always ask your child's class teacher or um, people working with your child if you need anything specific to your children. So what is phonics? So um, Lesson Sounds was a government programme which was introduced in 2007. And its recommendation was that we taught phonics as our first stop in reading. So it's the skills of segmenting and blending, which I'll talk about shortly, and then knowing the alphabetic code. And basically the idea is reading and writing is not natural. It is a kind of code. And by teaching phonics, we're giving children the key to crack that code. There are loads of other skills when it comes to reading, and I'll talk some more about those, but phonics is kind of the way in. It's the initial one. Um, and the best way to teach phonics is through a synthetic programme. And here we use essential lesson sounds, which we introduced this September. So when I said it's the introduction, word reading and phonics, it, phonics mainly focuses on that, on, the, on how you sound out each word. Comprehension is the understanding of books and stories, and that's equally as important. It's great if you can read it, but you need to understand what you're reading. So reading is really complex and it relies on loads of different skills. Decoding is that very first step. So it's literally the ability to read words on the page, but there are far more things going on when we read than that. Fluency is really essential for, for good comprehension. And that's one of the reasons why we chose Essential Letters and Sounds because there is such a focus on fluency, rereading, and reading sight words, but sight reading in a way, um, and it's speed at which they can read and understand the text, and that's what a huge part of essential lesson sounds. We also chose essential lesson sounds because it's really vocabulary rich, so it asks children to read words, put them in a sentence, and learn what they mean, and introduces them to a lot of new words, and that links in with all our pathways for writing that we do in literacy. Um, understanding sentence structure and cohesion, so how sentences link together is so important for your reading and then that feeds into your writing and then reasoning background knowledge allows children to relate to what they're reading. So sometimes you'll find very strong decoders are reading books that they're a little bit too hard for them in their understanding. And um, so I know when I was in year two, sometimes a child might pick up Harry Potter or something. And some of those were great, some of the earlier ones, but some of the themes as they go through are a bit tricky for a child to understand. So Essential Lesson Sounds is based on um, the Lesson Sounds document I just mentioned in 2007. It was developed by a group of teachers who've taken that document and made it into a synthetic phonics program and made it um, ironed out the kinks, basically. Um, it's based on the delivery of whole class, high quality first teaching, consistent terminology by adults. So the lesson looks the same in reception and in year one and in year two. 
There are consistent resources in reception one and year two, and everything is based on repetition and reinforcement of learning. The idea is keep up, not catch up. So we don't want children falling behind. We want them keeping going the whole way through. And it's got a lot of regular assessment in it. And it has also meant that we haven't had to, um, at the moment, buy a lot of new reading books. Um, but we are looking to do that in the next couple of years. Um, and it was created to ensure that every child reads well, but quickly. So there is quite a pacey program. So it's taught every day to the whole class together. So there's not children taken out in small groups. Everyone's together on the carpet. Um, lessons follow exactly the same structure each day. So games are really great and they have a place, but a lot of children then focus on the games and the rules of the game and not the learning. The idea is the lessons follow the, strange, the same structure every day to reduce cognitive load on the children, meaning that the only thing they're learning is that new sound that they need. New sounds are taught Monday to Friday, so four sounds a week, and then children apply their new learning on a Friday, either in a decodable book with those four sounds in it, or it might be um, doing some written work, depending on how old they are and what you're focusing on. Teaching follows the sequence show, copy, repeat, so children are taught and not tested, and practice and repetition is key. They recommend that every book that a child is given is read four times, and I'll talk some more about rereading as we go through. So we set reading books that closely match a child's phonics level. So you learn S-A-T-P or S-A-T-P Monday to Thursday. And the book that you take home on a Friday will only have those four sounds and any harder to read and spell words that you've learned in there as well. So the child shouldn't come across anything they don't know in their reading books. Now, obviously, we, we are expanding, you know, bigger school than we used to be. And also that would mean we would need the same book for every single child. And we don't have, um, for example, in reception 36 copies of every book. I want to get them eventually, but at the moment we're just working up to that. So hence why you'll notice a lot of the books are being set online with other books being set where we can. So please do let us know if you're struggling to access those online books because they are really, it's really essential that you can. So technical words. So phoneme is the smallest unit of sound that is found in a word. So a phoneme, we've learned um, k in reception today, but we also learned k yesterday. And that's because it's the same phoneme, the same sound, but it can be spelt in two different ways. It can either be a curly cut, as we used to call it, or a kicking cut. Um, a digraph is where two letters make one sound when read. So for example, AI is in rain is A. Um, but a y is a um, a on its own can be a a split digraph can be a e y can make a as in gray so a digraph is where you have more than one letter that makes um one sound trigraphs three letters so i g h CVC stands for consonant vowel consonant. So you might have cvc words and most of the words we do in phase two and phase three are cvc and then we move on to um, CCVC, CVCC words. Um, and they get longer and longer. So we have segmenting, which is breaking a word up into its sounds. Blending, putting them together. And you might have heard the children say blending hands. And then we have harder to read and spell words. So they're words that cannot be easily decoded. So blending, right. So in essential letters and sounds, we do um, robot arms and blending hands, just making sure you can see me on the screen. So we would say b, ed, bed, t, in, tin, m, ug, mug. And you will notice I'm using pure sounds. I'm not saying b, ed, I'm saying b, ed. So it's a very short sound, um, t, i, n. So we said to the children today, if you hear your parents saying, because the really common one is k, k, it needs to be that short, sharp k sound. And they've been told to tell you no if uh, you get it wrong. So they'll be on the listen at home. And then segmenting is the opposite. So it's where you stretch the word bed, b, ed, tin, t, in. So the reason we're pulling that is because obviously the words will get longer, like fast, fast. And children will often write at, because they're so used to doing those CVC words. So by pulling it fast, 
you can hear all four sounds then. So it's almost pulling it apart. The phase one often happens in preschools and at the beginning of reception. And actually, I think phase one should run through all the phases. It's so, so, so important. Tuning into sounds, listening and remembering, talking about sounds, rhythm and rhyme. Um, and you'll see in a second, it's the things you naturally do as a parent with your child. But then there's that oral blending and segmenting, the robot talking, blending hands, pulling words apart. Um, so how can you help at home? It's everything I'm sure you do already. Singing songs, nursery rhymes, action rhymes, sharing storybooks, talking about sounds, um, playing silly sentences, happy Harry hops, playing animal sounds, and then turning the games that you've always played, I spy, into ones where you're sound talking, I spy a k at. What is it? Or we've been doing old MacDonald has a k ow and they make the moo sound for me. So it's just taking those opportunities to sound talk. Can you get me your coat? Things like that. So the children are really practicing that all the time. We then move on to phase two. So we've got um, 19 phonemes in phase two, and it's where we meet our first digraphs as well. So you can see they're in sets. So we're teaching one set a week at the moment. And um, you've got CK digraph as in duck, FF as in puff, um, LL as in hill and SS as in hiss, but you would say d or k, duck, p or f, puff, h, il, hill. So it's still those three sounds, but there are four letters. And um, so they're all CVC words and they all contain four phone, they're three phonemes, sorry. And then k, at, cat, d or k. Duck. So we put buttons, we call them sound buttons underneath each letter. And we say to children, use your magic pointing finger and point to the sounds. Um, but underneath the duck, you can see underneath the k grapheme that they've got a line. And that's because that's two letters that make one sound. So it's really important that the children recognize those digraphs in words. And sometimes we actually do activities where we ask them just to put those dots and lines in um, to help them see digraphs in words. So they're not reading d or k, k. they're just reading d or k. Okay, so phase three, we learn lots more um, phonemes and a lot of digraphs in and, and the first trigraph in phase three and also some alternatives. So you have oo that can make an o uh sound or you have ow that can make ow as in cow or o oh as in grow. And we're still on that CVC. So ch, ip, chip, sh, op, shop, in, thin. So it's still those three but we've obviously got digraphs in there, which is why they're four letter words. So how can you help at home with phase two and phase three? Listen to your child reading their home reading book, aim for five to 10 minutes every single day as much as possible. I cannot emphasize enough how important reading is. The first time it's gonna be more labored, the child's gonna be sounding out those words and you should have increasing fluency every single time. Yes, they might seem like they're reading it from memory, but actually that's fluency. And what you can focus on then is retelling and comprehension and all those other skills, inference questions. And it builds their confidence. No one wants to read a reading book every day that they are sounding out every single word. I wouldn't want to do it and I wouldn't put the children through it. We want them to have successful reading experiences. So if you have one book in your book bag and you read that four nights in a row, fine absolutely fine reread 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 as much as you possibly can and in fact essential lesson sounds that's why i said for recommend that you read every book four times so reread reread as often as possible and um, don't just sit down on a sunday and read all three books you know just a little and often is the key so to help recognize um sounds you could do sound bingo or noughts and crosses or pairs if that's something your child's finding tricky you could use phonics play or other websites just check they're not american and they're, and they're following our pronunciation and they're not schwaring which is where we're saying make sure it's on the game my net lights on the fridge just move them around playing i spy looking for sounds in the environment signs harder to read and spell hunt so you could use those the no go 
the ones you can't sound out, the harder to read and spell ones, put them around the room. Can you find them and read them? If that's something maybe there's been a next step in your child's reading record. And um, then the moving to phase four. So we don't have any new sounds, but we focus on longer um, spellings. We have the CC, BC words, tent, mend, damp. Now, I think this phase is absolutely crucial, especially for spelling, because what you will find is if a child was writing, for example, we've got down here spot, they would write spot, spot, because they're so used to doing those three. And actually what we really like about essential lesson sounds is their huge focus on phase four. So already at the beginning of phase two in reception, we are blending with our robot hands every day. So we did f, l, a, sh, flash today. So we're already doing phase four blending, even if we're not reading and writing it, ready for phase four is such a crucial phase in terms of spelling. So I really like that they use that all the way through. So children don't end up writing spot for spot or tip for trip. So they're already hearing those consonant um, clusters in their uh, speech. So harder to read and spell words, often called tricky words, sometimes red words in books. Um, they are words that cannot be blended or segmented because they're irregular. So the, was, said, you, some. And they basically break the rule. And in phase four, they learn lots of them. So they learn said, have, like, so, some, come. Um, and you've got to learn them by sight, which is where practice makes perfect. So as much reading you can do with your child as possible is the key. Um, how can you help at home with phase four? Again, listen to your child read their home reading book. Bingo, noughts and crosses, pairs for high frequency words or tricky words, harder to read and spell words as they're called. Phonics play, other websites, magnetic letters. Gladiator is a nice game or sometimes called splat where you write words on a piece of paper, hold a pen or pencil or a fly swatter as uh, Miss Selwyn has. And you hit the word, the first person to hit the word wins. Um, I call it gladiator because I like the pen being a sword because boys are quite into that. Um, write the words on a piece of paper, put them around the room in a pair. One of you has to run and get the word and read it and the other person has to write it and who can be the quickest and then you take turns at both. So again, if, if um, harder to read and spell words is a target in your child's reading record, that could be a game that you play that's different to doing their reading to help them at home. Now it gets complicated in phase five. It's a big one. And phase five pretty much runs through what, what should be year one, the whole of year one. And um, it's a little bit into year two at the moment because obviously our current year twos missed a little chunk of reception and um, with that initial lockdown. But ideally it would it would just be the whole of year one. So we teach new graphemes for reading and writing. So AI, like I said before, you'd have AY, split digraph A, and there are lots of different ways to do it. But then as well, sometimes you've got one letter, one sound um, like I at the bottom with fin and find that would be it's either an I sound or an I sound. So, yeah, there are lots of different um, pronunciations of the same grapheme. So that's again where reading experience is really, really important. The more they read it, the more they're exposed to it, the more they use that language, understand that language, see those different ways to spell it the easier they're gonna find their spelling and, and then their fluency in their reading. So teaching the split digraph, it's often sometimes called a magic E, the alpha blocks call it the magic E. It's where you add the E onto an end of a word and then that changes the vowel in the middle of the word from a um, letter, letter sound, O, to a letter name, O. So Rob becomes robe when you add the E because the O turns into an O. Tap becomes tape, cub becomes cube and pin becomes pine. Um, and you'll see the red line underneath is how we would draw that for our sound buttons. How can I help at home? Again, top of the list, listen to your child reading their home reading book every day. Make up captions for your child to add sound buttons to if they're not seeing digraphs in words and they're sounding out P yeah, for play, add sound buttons in, see where they're making those mistakes, get them to really underline the AY so they know that that's a digraph. Leave each other messages. You could focus on the high frequency words you know your child's missing. And um, when they're spelling, if, you're, if um, a teacher says they're struggling with their spelling, I would always say read. That would be my recommendation. Um, 
but also think about what looks right because if you're reading and you recognize those words quickly you'll be able to recognize in your own writing that they're spelled wrong so that's how an adult when often we look at words and think well, that doesn't look right I can't understand why it doesn't look right and you'll write it out again a few times they picture the words in their heads sometimes we draw boxes around the words so you can see so tray ends with that y it goes down and um, it's just it helps children picture those words now the year one phonics test has traditionally happened in june for anyone who's got older siblings you might um remember that happening in june but the past two years it's been december of year two and um, because of covid so each child will take the screening test with a familiar adult. So um, last year, because of bubbles, Miss um, Maddox did her own class, but traditionally I've done all the year ones as the phonics lead in the school. Um, children basically decode and blend 40 words from across phases three to five. And it's a mix of real and tricky words, the pass mark, a silly word, sorry. And the pass mark will be between 31 and 35, normally about 32. They tell us afterwards. That's why I said between 31 and 35. So this is what it looks like. So one, this would be two pages. So one page has four words and it has um, no alien means a real word. Alien means a made up silly word. And that's where the phonics play games of the dragons and the aliens, um, which are all free on phonics play online, are really good because it's about sorting real words and silly words. We often find the better readers need a little bit of training for the silly words because they are um, high frequency, quickly reading. Um, and they'll look at a word like blan and turn it into blank because they know that's not a real word and there should be a k on the end, really. So um, they start as easy as cat um, phase two and they go up to saucer phase five. So um, I'm not sure when that's happening, but as soon as we have more information, we will let parents know. So pathways to spell is so once we've done our phonics, which would be reception and year one when we're when we're back on track, um, children will then move into pathways to spell, which is where spelling rules and grammar kick in. And then pathways to spell runs the whole way up to year six, getting progressively more challenging. In key stage one, we look at spelling rules um, for alternative spellings like we just did in phonics. So it's a continuation of our phonics. Rules for adding suffix suffixes, syllables, base words, mnemonics, common exception words, different tenses, past, present, progressive. Um, children must be able to write progressively in the right tense or in the same tense, using ly to turn an adjective into an adverb, shun words, apostrophes, four sentence types, and homophones. Um, and then that's that's sort of the year one and year two and then it moves up as the children go throughout the school and then that links in with their writing they do in English so again listen to your child they're reading their home reading book aim for five ten minutes every day if possible point out features of spag when they're reading so why did the author use an exclamation mark and what does he want us to read that sentence like how would the character say that how why is the character talking like that choose more challenging chapter books to read your child at bedtime um, and I recommend that the whole way through key stage one and um, always read a child a more challenging book that they can't read themselves it increases their vocabulary and gets them a love of reading and um, I love Roald Dahl for that and um, plays of words in an amazing way I know children love David Williams these days there are loads of fantastic books and um, to share at bedtime but in particularly as they get into year two and beyond and um, retelling a story after reading and asking comprehension questions so how do the people how do they feel how do you know um, when children start doing um, SPAG, ensure that they are talking correctly because if they can't say it, they can't write it. So if they're not talking in full sentences, they're going to struggle to write full sentences. So one of our bugbears in reception is um, when they say things like, I can't open my water bottle. And we say, OK. Because they've given us a statement, their question should be please, can you open my water bottle? So if they in, in terms of identifying a question, in a text if they can't say it they won't be able to do that so it's really important they're talking in those full sentences uh, correctly and there are lots of online games to help with spelling and grammar if that's something your teacher said that your child needs a bit of extra help with so general advice to support reading if you remember nothing else from my uh, chat today once is never enough reread 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 um reread favorite books poems school reading scheme books 
rereading helps them more um, quickly and accurately. Four times per book, we'll make that a rule. Four times for every book. In their reading records, um, record the date, the title, and any comments you want to make. It might be in response to a next step we've given. It might be a next step that you feel we want to look for in school or something you want us to do. Look out for what we've put in there to work on at home. It might say, recall the sentence which I'll talk to you about in a second. It might say comprehension questions or inference questions. And if you ever don't know what they mean, please do ask your class teacher um, because that's what we want them working on at home. We might have written key words at the bottom to practice and that's where those games could come in useful. Um, so please do, please do look in their reading record and please do write because we love to see how many times children are reading at home. So it gives us a really good idea of, you know, if a child's reading every day at home and struggling with something, we know we need to put some more intervention in. But if they're not reading at home, we're going to think they need a bit more practice. Um, pick books at the right level. So we want children to be able to have successful reading experiences, hence why all their books will match the four sounds they've been taught in the week. Comprehension's key. So the next two kind of links. So one more time we're feeling and comprehension is key. So when they're reading a sentence, so the cat is sad. The would be your harder to read and spell word. That would have to, you'd have to know that word. K at cat. So you've now read two words, go back to the first word. The cat is, is, the cat is sad. The cat is sad. One more time we're feeling, the cat is sad. So by the end of the book, because you haven't just rushed past that sentence when an adult says, how did the cat feel? They should be able to say sad because they read the cat is sad, the cat is sad. And tomorrow, when they read it again, they might go, the cat is sad, the cat is sad. Next day, they might be able to say the cat is sad. So although you, you know, it sounds like just memory reading, that's really important for fluency. And they might have really secured their understanding of that word, the. And if that's what they got, that's brilliant because that's a really, really key word. So reread, 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 and then be patient. I know it can be a bit frustrating sometimes. And sometimes the lower books, the sort of books at the beginning are a little bit dull and repetitive and it's frustrating, but you will get past those and you'll get to the, the uh, more exciting books um, as you move through. Um, encourage your children to use their robot arms, their blending hands, or if it's a longer word, they could pull their finger across like this um, just to give them a chance to have a look for those digraphs, trigraphs, say to them, oh, is that a trigraph? Is that a trigraph? Can we read that again? How can we sound that out? And um, can we break that word into syllables? Um, yeah, just give them a little bit, of, little bit of tips like that. Fab, we've come to the end. So thank you for listening. Unfortunately, you can't ask any questions. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. And um, if you have any further questions, please do ask your child's class teacher. You can always ask me as well. Always send an email into the office if you've got anything about this you particularly want to ask a question about. Main main message is reread, reread, reread. Four times is our rule. Central lesson sounds suggest that. Um, four times at home is the recommended one. So just read, 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 read. I know we're always saying it in school, but it really does make such a difference to both their reading and their spelling. So as much as you can is great. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I will stop my video now and let you get on with your day. Thank you.